meeting to order. Mr. Robertson, if you could do our blessing for us. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we call upon the seat because we know that that which takes place and it is for the benefit <coughs> and for the welfare of the people is blessed in thy sight. Therefore we pray that all things that take place this evening may be to serve that end. That <coughs> there may be understanding and agreement service of the people of St. John and that that which would be a benefit for all will follow. We thank thee, we desire that there might be uh, there might be unity in understanding <coughs> and that the good the good and needful purposes uh, would be fulfilled and that that which would have a long-lasting benefit for the citizens of St. John, for the those, O oh Lord, who are prosperous, those who are striving, and those who are in need might all be served, and that the variety of types of benefits which take place, which serve all the people, and would be there would be unity achieved in the bringing forth of that which will favor and help St. John and enable us to prosper, to go forward. All good things, and this we ask in Jesus. Dumpster repair is just that's that's just an ongoing thing. I mean, we repair I don't know at least every one every other week where we replace it. And uh, I'm wondering how on item two. I wonder I'm wondering how much. I mean, how pretty do you want these trash trucks? They'll never be beautiful. Any of them. Well, I know they won't be beautiful, but we don't want to break them down in the middle of the street, blocking 
traffic. We don't want them to trip up oil as they're picking up yeah, trash. Well, at this juncture, there was only one truck that dripped oil. It, and uh, it's still in the shop great bend. They repaired it for us. Uh, and we had it for about two weeks. It was a complete motor of overhaul and a whole bunch of other stuff. We had it for about two weeks and developed a, a knock in the motor again. But none of the other three leaked any oil. I will say, uh, on that old blue and white bank, uh, it's got a place where it can leak hydraulic oil. But it's, it's just a little big hydraulic cylinder, and, uh, and I've got that rebuilt, just need to put it on. As a matter of fact, I started on that old bag, because, uh, which is actually just our backup truck. We've been having so much trouble with that computerized international that we had to put the Mac on the road for quite a bit. As long as there are bins that still need to be repaired, we have a problem. As long as there are still trucks that are dripping with oil, be it motor oil or hydraulic oil, we have an issue. So, <clears throat> well, this, this one where I need to where I be replacing the cylinder is the only one that leaks any any oil, and that'd be hydraulic fluid. It's a small amount of just a little tiny amount of time. Okay, but, it, but that's going on there tomorrow, so. Okay. And I did, and, <clears throat> and uh, once a quarter I go through and I inspect all of my trucks. I'm allowed to do that. Uh, what number is it? NHTSA section 369, I think, authorizes me. Authorizes you to go through it once a quarter, or authorizes no, authorizes me to inspect my trucks, okay. or anybody else's. I noticed that little jab in the newspaper. We called him a liar a couple of times. Okay. We appreciate that. Was there anything else that we needed to address at this time? Uh, not really, except um, everything is, aside from that little cylinder, everything is pretty much up to snuff. I haven't tried washing any trucks yet. Uh, the old Mac, uh, <coughs> I'm not sure it will wash yet. And there, there is, there is one impression that I get because this, you know, this just kind of started all at once. But uh, about a year and a half ago. A couple people came to me, and when we signed it, when we made a new contract, they came and they they thought about buying the trash service. And I said, "Well, you know, let let me get this new contract straightened around, because I don't want I got to organize it for you." And uh, now they never did come back, 
which is okay, you know. Uh, but it's, I mean, the, the way I look at it is that, is that these folks are going to, going the back way to, to get in the trash business. I've heard they bought a trash truck and uh, actually uh, a couple of your council folks are pretty close with the sun and, uh, and I'm, I'm thinking that, uh, that we've got a little bit of a fallacy. I don't want to say it really harshly. Uh, but I think they're trying to get me out so they can get in. Okay, well, I'm not sure who you're referring to. Yeah, I'm, I, and I'm, not I, asking, I won't mention, I'm not asking you to name yeah, names. But I, I won't mention names in public. Um, I can assure you that any conversations with regards to the trash service have all been done in open session. Mm -hmm. There haven't been any executive sessions with regard to the trash service. Well, actually, I understand that... Uh, here a couple of months ago, after I left the meeting, there was a impromptu meeting in the hallway when the all germ took a break. Not that I'm aware of. Well, I'm aware of it. Okay. One of one of the council folks came to me and told me about it. Okay. And uh, and you know you stand it uh, say, well I can you know I can get a complaint. Let me call somebody. And a lot of these complaints, have, I suspect, have been brought upon by somebody asking folks to make a complaint. From conversations that I have had with all of the council members before we ever started down this path, they were all routinely having people grumble at them about trash service without them having to ask anything. Now, whether or not, <clears throat> you know, there has been stuff that has occurred since then, I can't speak to that, but what I can tell you is that it is my understanding that there are a number of people in the community that are unhappy with the service that they're getting. So, I, you know, as far as trying to backdoor somebody into the trash service, to my knowledge, that's not occurring. Yeah, well, I can't, I, and I can't say... 100% that, that it's happening either. This this is just, you know, the impression because everything's got to be in a hurry and somebody's trying to get something done quick, you know, and, uh, and you know, we've been, been in that business for 16 years and, uh, and yeah, we've made some mistakes, but they're few and far between. Well, as far as in a hurry, I, I don't see 90 days as a time frame being in a hurry. No, uh, but but one of your one of your council members wanted to uh, do this at the last meeting. And that's why we have a council of five members, so mm -hmm. that there is multiple voices. I, that are I I don't have any problem working within 90 days, none whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but I guess I don't have any more for now. Okay. Thank you. Consent agenda. Approve minutes for the regular meeting of 11 3 2015. Approve appropriation ordinance 11 17 2015 in the amount of $19,019.07. .19 and um, request from Cindy Friesen for the skating rink for PE class for January 4th through the 8th and January 11th through the 15th from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. Are there any questions? Move to approve the agenda. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Chief Saylor. Um, I visited with the County Commissioners last week in regards to the impound lot. Um, when I got there, um, they gave me some information I wasn't aware of before uh, talking with you guys at the last meeting. Apparently their um, reasoning for basically getting out of the impound business um, was to get away from having to pay the front-end costs of vehicles that are towed um, when somebody's arrested and that kind of thing. Um, 
from my understanding, our two local tow companies um, are working together to, to essentially build their own storage. Um, so the, the plans for the county are to, to clean out the impound lot. They're, they're going to keep the property <laughs> and keep that open um, in the event we need secure storage for evidence um, if we have a drug seizure or just anything, any, anything we might need to keep a vehicle for evidence. However, the tow companies have agreed um, basically to take on the front end of towing vehicles, whether it be for ordinance, whatever we need them for, and handle the billing. Um, so, although I'm confident we could handle an impound and probably even make a little money, um, doing it this way I think benefits everybody and then it removes the risk from us of having to, to worry about paying that tow bill on the front end and then chasing that bill, um, you know, should somebody be in jail for an extended period of time or something like that. So, um, basically it's in place um, for us to start enforcing the, the vehicle ordinances and stuff like that and they will tow the vehicle and they'll store it and they'll take care of billing whoever might need to be billed for that and then like I said we'll still have the opportunity to use the impound for what we need it for. So after learning that I don't see any reason to try to as they So the tow vehicle. companies aren't going to charge us, they're going to charge the individuals. It's, it's going to charge the, the individual that owns the vehicle. My question, Matt, because unless something's changed, the last time here when I brought that to council a while back about Gillespie, uh, that it was going to be up to the city's responsibility to pay that upfront cost. This is this is what I'm getting from the commissioners. I don't, I haven't, I haven't talked to to uh, Lawrence or Scott Claus. I think before we do anything, we've got to talk to Lawrence and Scott and see because I don't know whether that's. Well, regardless, the county's not open to transferring ownership of the impound. They, they don't want the impound used for anything but secure storage for for law enforcement. So if if that is the case, then we're going to have to look at another route of either just, you know, having to worry about the billing or building our own impound. Could you talk to them guys? If, yeah, I'll get with them and, and see exactly what their ideas are. If that's right, well, that'd be great. Yeah. I, I question that a little bit. Because yeah. I was trying to figure out what we were going to do. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? That's all I got. Hey, Adam. Yes, Adam. Yeah. Adam, one question. Since we have four officers now, are you going to start rotating the shifts? As far as? So not one person's working nights? or. I just think that would be nice. Yeah, we have, but we, we already did. We, the, the shifts that are working right now are at the officer's request. So that's, I mean, that was something we implemented from the beginning. Chief, any, um, any word on uh, those weapons? Uh, I've sent the paperwork off. We're just, we're just waiting on them to come. Right, thank you. Any other questions for the Chief? So in your packet, you guys were received, I put in there the Blue Cross and Blue Shield uh, cost increase. Um, we met with them, we actually met them late October, but since I was up here last meeting, I thought it would be best that I present it to you guys and not Vicki. So um, the first column that you have that's uh, up top here, this is the current of what you guys pay now for the city and the employees. Okay. The elite program, that is going to be what the city has now, all the benefits and everything, but they are having a 12% increase in their premium for that. Okay? The goal plan is everything benefit wise that they have now, except they increase the employee's deductible. So instead of an individual, um, the old plan, I think it was like 1150. Now it's up to 3250. And a family was at 2300, and now it's up to 6500. But the cost is less for for both you and you know. I looked at all the employees about the average employee. The cost is going to be less for them, but their deductible is going to be more. So we just need direction for you guys which plan you guys want to have.
this elite land was the one that we went to a year ago. Yeah, yeah, it's the exact. And it was supposed to be so much cheaper. And it was. At the time, it was at the time. Now, year, we also have the option um, to split that increase with the employees in some fashion, if that's something council wants to consider. Increase as of right now, the majority of the city would take on because you guys pay, we pay 95 percent, or the employee just pays five of that premium. But Julianne's saying is that you could take that 12 percent and like split it and say the city would take seven percent of it, you're going to add five percent onto the employee, so the employee is going to pay 10 percent instead of, and you guys would pay 90 percent. But they, they keep their deductibles. Their deductibles are still low and all stays the same. Yeah. 5%. What do you mean the average employee? An average em employee, you're looking at probably an extra, I would say, anywhere from 60 to $70 more a month. That's, that's on a high end if you look at one that has like multiple You're families. saying adding 5%. That's just adding 5% to their to the plan. If you add, like, let's say you take the elite plan and you're going to have 10% go towards the city employees. Of this 11000 10% of that would be $1,115. That's what they would pay, where the city would pay $10,000. That's for all the employees. That's right. for all the employees, yes. So right now, all the employees combined pay this much? Correct. Monthly. Monthly. Correct. You got it. So you're looking at adding five hundred dollars to what they currently pay, five or six hundred dollars. If you said the employee but a hundred ten or hundred twenty dollars a month for insurance is pretty cheap. Well and I'm also trying to look at it from the standpoint of if you've got that three thousand dollar for a three two hundred and fifty dollar deductible every year that you're having to pay before insurance is paying anything. That's, that's a lot of money. Yeah, the, the insurance pays 50-50. Do they? Yeah. So when you, they go to a doctor's appointment, they pay 50% and the insurance pays 50%. But once they hit the 1100 then the insurance kicks in and they pay everything. Or once they hit the 3000 if it's for the whole plan, then the insurance will pay everything up front. But right now, they pay 50-50. You'll still have twenty one hundred dollars more, more out of pocket with correct to get one hundred percent. So the five percent will be a lot less expensive than the additional. For the employee, the five yes. percent would be cheaper for for them, and they get a lower deductible. Right. If you keep the elite plan and, and the city and takes the whole twelve percent, that would be a great benefit to working for the city. Is that the city does that for? Pay 10%, pay 90%, well, I'm just I'm just looking at it as, as comparatively. You're looking at uh, what, uh, 720, 800 dollars a year higher if if, if we uh, on that if, if they picked up five percent. Where the other way they're going to have another. Twenty-one hundred bucks, or another forty-two hundred bucks out of pocket. Right. So I'm just saying, well, to, be, well, to be less offensive or intrusive on yeah. the employees, it'd be easier to do split that percentage up on. Now you guys, you guys have budgeted next year. There's another <coughs> in the budget for you guys to absorb that fourteen thousand increase. There is enough budgeted. Well, 
to stay with that elite team, but I think maybe we ought to talk to you. employees and see if they split that 12%. Okay, so to answer that, I talked to Corey and I talked to Adam. And the majority of the employees, and they can correct me if I'm wrong, but the majority of the employees opted for the gold plan and not the 5% increase. Because I had mentioned that to them, that they may take home. The majority of them wanted the... They want the high, they got the one. So I'm not... Can I explain why I think that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, like you said. Like hear that. It, it, it depends on how you look at it. Other than the, the fact that my wife and I had a baby this year, before that I never came close to even meeting this deductible because I, I never go to the doctor. So for me, it was a more a better gamble to stick with what I'm paying now because I'm if I don't meet eleven hundred fifty dollars, then I'm not going to meet this. So I would rather keep my monthly payment low where it's at than add on another seventy bucks a month to keep a lower deductible that I never meet anyway. That's that's my feeling. So I mean, pending uh, catastrophic surgery or something would would be the only reason we would ever meet that deductible. So that's that's my thoughts as to why I would prefer to keep paying what I'm paying now and have a higher deductible. Okay. If that sure. makes sense. I think it's basically a gamble because if you, you go between the differences, you know, a thirty two hundred dollar a year gamble, it depends on where you want to put your neck out. And, and I know there's a lot of us that have younger children and all it takes is for one of them children to go down or get sick and maybe you're on that high end. So to me, I'm more comfortable paying a little bit more and having that lower deductible if it were not doing it. So I think it's kind of And when I asked the girls in the office, they opted for the for the for the goal plan, but I explained the exact same thing to Corey that if you have one kid that gets sick, two, two, two kids get sick. I, I told them if it was me, I would I would take the ten percent increase and keep my deductible low. But then again, I I have family members and I have medical bills and I I, I like my low deductible. The gold plan only saved the employee roughly twenty dollars a month. Twenty dollars a month about that. That's to possibly have to pay almost three correct. times in a deductible if you do have that accident or surgery. You're, yep. or You're absolutely. It, it really didn't, in the long run, it didn't save. It was like 20 bucks, but you still have a higher deductible right. to me. But I can see Adam's so point that... Mixed, there's been mixed... Um, right, but ideas. if you want me to take a poll, that's... I don't know if they want their premium increased. But I would increase it, that, that, if you're asking my opinion. Well, that's why, why, don't we take, why don't we take an impromptu poll on that and find out uh, whatever, how everyone feels from each department. That way we can get a better idea. I didn't get a lot of feedback from the electrical guys did either. Uh, I did not because did. they've been in, in training here in the last couple of days. So um, they we wanted to do that. So. And we've got time to Yeah, do we, I mean, we have to, to, you have until the next council meeting, and then you're going to need to decide by, okay. by then and stuff. So. Well, I'm, I'm kind of with Marshall. I kind of hate to see this do away with the elite program. Yeah. That's the best one there is. And I'm not even opposed. I mean, if we've got it budgeted and we can cover it, I mean, if it's one of them deals, I'd say leave it alone and we'll just put the bill on it, too. I agree with that. I mean, but I would like to have more of the employees input. Yeah, if they're, well. if they're bound to turn it, if they want to change, I mean, well, it be cheaper for the city. No, I think the change comes in. They'd like to keep the elite, but if we're going to increase their premiums, Correct. then they're willing if to go If we're going to increase gold. what they pay, they're, yeah. they're willing to go to the old, which the gold. I guess, like I said, if we've got the money and it's budgeted, yeah. Yeah. I'm not opposed to just leaving it alone and paying it. Yeah, either. we've already got it budgeted out mm -hmm. for this, and why don't we just go ahead and just take care of it? I mean, I don't know. I don't know either. I'm kind of with all I, 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 can, I can guarantee you mine went up, and... I'm not changing mine, I'm just paying the difference and going on because I like my low deductible. Mine went up too. What was the discussion when we done this last year, Troy or the mayor, who can remember? Uh, are we still? No, we are not still with the grandfathered plan. That was what we did was last year. We shifted away from that so that we would have the flexibility okay. Okay. if we needed to. What, we had done. what did we kind of talk about at last meeting? Or last time we just came up, what we were thinking about in the future. Do you guys remember? I wasn't on. 
I'm thinking we, we were, were doing either one of these options. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have, we didn't think that we, I mean, it was an option of going either way. Okay. If I remember right. I can't remember what it was. But, but it was down, what, 12000 Yeah. Last yeah. year. Yeah, and I think you guys were kind of in the, let's wait and see what the increase is and grow from there. And in another year, it could be completely different. It could yeah, decrease yeah, again, exactly. too. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I guess I'm similar to you guys. We saved that last year, and we got it budgeted this year. Let's leave it alone I said this year. Just leave it alone. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it is something we need to <laughs> talk with the employees about, though, because, I mean, we won't be able to absorb a 12% increase. Every year. Every year. Right. And not pass some of that on. So, right. I mean, to me, I think it's something you get... Sounds right. bad, but you kind of get the headset set that of what could happen or what right. Right. might possibly happen. So it's just not a total shock if it does happen. Right. I really hate to see the deductibles go this high, that high. Well, I, really I, do. I do too. But I mean, if that's the way they'd rather have it, then well, I mean, like I said, I think if we can, if we've got a budget, we just pay for it this year and yeah. and look at it again next yeah, year. Yeah, absolutely. No. Because they don't take much hospital. Okay, so what I'm hearing then is you guys are all in agreement. So if that's the case, I need a motion to approve the new rates for the Blue Cross Blue Shield Health Plan for the 2016 year at, for the Elite Plan. So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion? With the regards of next year, we're probably going to have to look at it. So yeah, they may have yeah, to yeah. That's a given right there. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, since we saved the 12000 last year, we've got to... We're really year. breaking even. Yeah. 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 All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay, so in your packet also, you guys should have received uh, the renewal for the cereal malt beverage license for Dillon's. So I, I just need somebody to make a motion. We need to we need to show them what blue to do. Second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by vote. Okay. Um, on December eighteenth, between eleven and one, we would like to have a Christmas employee appreciation lunch for for the city employees. So we'd like to invite you guys to if, and just to inform you guys of that. It'll be here at the, the office and we're planning on having Wheatlands cater it for them. And we're also planning on closing the office from 11 to 1 so that the office staff can participate as well mm -hmm. and not have to worry about waiting on customers. And do you have money allotted to do this? Correct. So. We do. Me. I don't know. Yeah, that's okay with me. Don't we have a T-bone? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I think, I think I, I planned on turkey. All right. So, uh, in the past, it's been my knowledge that the city has closed on December 24th because we do not take two other government holidays, which is Columbus Day and Martin Luther King's Day. So if that's how you guys want to continue, I need a motion so then that way Pam can get it on this bill for December when it goes out. We already take the 25th off, which that's Friday. So Thursday would be the 24th. I thought we just took off at noon. Am I thinking wrong? You are. We traditionally, or at least in the two years I've been on the council, we've closed the office for the day. Okay. Okay. So the 24th is the Friday. Close Christmas Eve. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Did you want me to do the, the ordinances now, too? Yeah. Okay. So every year you have to adopt the new uh, standard traffic ordinances and the uniform public office codes. Those aren't in your packets because. Um, I didn't get those books until Monday. So that's that's basically what this is. It's just saying that we're going to abide by the new 2015 standard office ordinances and uniform public office codes. I think it's state statute. It is. It is. We're, we're a little bit late on that. that. We're a little bit late. I think usually they come out like July, August. So I'm running a little bit late on it. Okay. 
You don't have to. You can use last year's version. Did you use last year's version? I don't think much has changed. I don't think. Nothing I've seen has changed. But it's just better practice to doubt. I need a motion. I need a motion. I'd make a motion to revive the same ones we had that hadn't changed. So you want to do the 2014 one? Yeah. Okay. I'll second that. Wait, can we then, back I up? Don't, then I don't mm -hmm. need, no, Adam's shaking his head now. Oh, we want, we already are in 2014. We want to adopt. We want to adopt the 2015. 2015. Okay. No, you want to second again? Yeah, I'll second again. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Five vote. Corey. Or wait, I'm sorry. No, I'm done. Okay. I'm, I'm completely yeah. done. All right, so we've been chugging, chugging along. Um, we added some stuff. We went into the wet center. We put in some uh, new ceiling panels. We straightened up the bench, got it fixed up. Um, uh, we fixed up some carpet and stuff. Looks a lot safer. There are some lights missing. Um, we got some prices on light fixtures. There's a mixture of light fixtures that are already in in the facility. Um, with the technology and the lighting nowadays, everything's pretty much going LED. Um, so I talked with Jeff and he got some numbers to completely redo the lighting in the width center would be about $4,200 for all the lights. So I'm just putting it out there. Um, what was that figure? 42, 40, 42 to 46 depending on the watts and the amount of lights you put in. Um, one of them called for 32 fixtures and another one called for 40 fixtures um, and with possibly a dimmer. I think we could go with the 32 fixtures um, being no more activity that's in there. Um, at that point in time though, the, the ceiling tiles and stuff that are in there, I don't know if we're better off fixing it while we're there. And if we do, ceiling tiles are about a dollar fifty square foot so that'd be another five grand. So we we're looking almost ten thousand dollars just into ceiling and light repairs in the next center of that. Do you have the money to be able to do that? We do not have this bill but we do not um, I know it was a concern and, and we went and got those numbers and figures so we put them out there. What is left in there on that with there's, there's just a couple there's a couple lights left in there that need to be fixed. We weren't going to go in there and, and just change a couple if we were going to do the whole array. But if we'd rather just fix the ones that are there, no. at this time we can do that. There's $12,851.98. Oh, and that's in the not line. touching the principal. I don't think we've touched the principal. We can't touch the principal. So. Of the two, which do you think is the most important? <laughs> um, I, you know, I don't know how much activity is in there in the lights, you know, the ceiling and safety being in good condition. You know, it's, it's priority. A lot of the tiles are cracked and sagging. Um, there's a layer of insulation that's on top of there. And I think just all that weight over the years that go they draw the moisture and everything, you know, they're, they're old and they're ready to go. I just have a feeling we're going to be stabbing one here and there for quite some time. Um, there's there's other repairs that need to be done. It looks like we have a on the northeast corner. We've been knocked out. Um, I heard through the grapevine someone's back going to get over at some point. I don't have any numbers for that, but that's going to be sheetrock, door jam, door, whole nine yards here. So. The only thing, guys, that's the only thing that kids do in winter. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I mean, my deal would be if, if the ceiling is a concern, to get a new one for dinner. I mean, for the sake of the shoot. How, is that blow in insulation or is it blow no, it's, it's all Oh, no, I don't think the insulation is bad at all. It looks like it's in pretty good shape from the panels that we did pop. I just don't think it's 
just do believe the weight on these two by four dials over time will just cause them all to sag and they're cracking up. What are they? The two by four dials are twelve bucks a piece. Uh, they're they're, they're, they're dollar, dollar fifty square foot. Yeah. It's roughly forty eight by seventy two. What about our floor? We're talking about doing that too. How much money goes into the fund, or does any additional money go into the fund off the investment? Can we get by with replacing a certain amount of lights and dressing it up a little bit? Maybe come back and do the rest of them later if we do the tile. Yeah, yeah, I think so for the most part. I, I do believe that we could fix a few of them. My train of thought is that we're up there. We've got the manpower mm -hmm. there. They're going to be <coughs> taking them down and handling them, moving them around, and then putting the ceiling back up. A lot of those fixtures are. Can't replace them right now, even if the house and things go out of there. They're done. You got to buy new ones to replace them. So um, you're going to probably replace a few more than what is already out to get there. I can I can get a better number. I can go take another count. So I'm looking yeah. at how exactly how many lights you can just replace what's back. Why don't you get a number on? Them? door that was back in or whatever it is, that's going to have to be fixed. Yeah, it needs to be fixed. Yeah, well, yes. that's, a, that's a priority to do. Don't you I'd say find out exactly how many lights absolutely have to be replaced with the door. You know, I would have a problem with spending fixed hours and keep on learning if we had to. I want to save a little. Half of it at least. There must be built somewhere else we can help it out. Because it is the only thing the kids have got to do to work with. Well, that was just my question. It seems to be half to just use with money to do the repairs, or is there someplace else that we might be able to go in and do and overhaul and get it all preserved and back up to where it needs to be? Probably the capital improvement. I don't know what's the capital improvement. If we do it all, we'll probably look at it. It's just a wild guess. I would be able to do it. You know, I don't think we could. And it would be great. I'd love to have it fixed up. Okay, I'm sure that in capital improvements, there's a balance of 7,732. Looks like it's like in an uncumbrance balance. So it could be something that you guys had to decide last year that you were going to do. Is that the same but, yeah, because if you add these two together, that's going to get your 7,722. So it looks like it's <coughs> in the, for the pool and the fire. That would be my guess. I would have to call the auditors to see. You, um, as for capital projects, capital improvement, I mean, you guys have close to to three hundred thousand capital improvements in that going on but I would have to do more research. Before the next council meeting can you find sure, out exactly yeah. what funds if we if we can use or what we can yep. use out of yep. and then that would come up with some yeah. little harder figures on yeah. what the three things that we need to get done yeah. aren't yeah. and then we can decide that's what unless you guys get something different. Is, uh, Four World Parks, is that limited to parks or is that, did we find out that was? Just two parks. Two parks, okay. And I can, I can call the auditors and I can figure it right out and see what we got. Is the senior center part of it, do they have any money to put towards that either? I don't know if they want about the rec division. Well, we could ask the rec, we can always ask to see if they would. 
Because <laughs> they do a lot of stuff in there as well. Right. That's correct to see if yeah, they you would help. Yeah, they all that might be a big help too. Some point. Do not. The senior side of the thing. Do they do this or not? Well, not ask them not to. I mean, I wouldn't be a little bit. They've got a lot for some to do. Concerns of uh, one of the uh, cosmetic issues outside of the uh, Wit Center is the broken sign out there. Has that been replaced? I haven't been by. No, there. no, it hasn't. Um, we talked about it all the time. We'll on that. Um, I was thinking to talk to Madonna a little bit instead of doing a raised leather sign. We might just go with a flat sign with a painting instead that we were not yeah. replacing over and over and that <laughs> south side. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, yeah. We're looking definitely <coughs> The other thing, uh, didn't Mel have money or wasn't one of Mel's projects to fix the, uh, the uh, ditch on First Street where the concrete's all breaking out of that? Wasn't that one of those deals? Go on there by. Monroe is getting a terrible. Yeah, I, could he, I, I thought he mentioned something about it. I thought he had money set aside. I thought he, yeah, I think he did. That could be, yeah. They might be through some of the stuff here. I have seen the gas and milk on several of those cross pain crossings that we're talking about. But that's all well, I mean, I know about it is just what I see. The one there at Monroe is starting to be pretty bad. You about lose a tire if you're in the middle of it. Yeah. Which one is the one where the one where it floods really bad? Yeah, blocks.
says the governing body uh, um, to establish these connections. How do we want to go about that? Is that something that I need to draw up? up to one inch and does a one inch meter and setter, it's um, $948.32. One of the reasons this is a little different is because there's no main that runs in the alley and or in front of the property, so we'll have to pull it off a of Kindle by the grain elevator and run it down the alley, so it's going to be a 120 foot surface. It'll be a little longer service than, than what we would normally install if we had a more adjacent line to the property. What did you do at Kansas, the new building across the street? They have already had a, uh, a meter and a separate hydrant in that lot, so they're just going to hook onto that hydrant. So that's all meter that's that's been cut in and everything that's now on the property owner there. Do you have any idea? Could you check it out? Yeah. Well, I'm See. telling you, they went about this far and tapped into the line over there at my place and set the meter and can, and it was my responsibility to get it to the building. Well, and, and that's the and that's the thing is, it's it's where the right of way in your easement is going to end, and that's why I'm saying this property is a little different because we're going to have to go out on Kindle and run it all the way down the alley, and then to we the have south. this Kindle to the north. north. We got to run it to the from the co-op north. Don't There's they have it clear to the corner there, or do they not own that corner property? They don't own that corner. The, the co-op owns okay. the corner property. Okay. So we'll have to come down the alley. The alley in that three-foot easement, and then we'll break off and set the can and leave the can at their property. I I have contacted um, Davis. We're going to hang there and just trench it in. So. We'll dig the pit, make the path, and dig the pit for the um, the meter, and then Davis is just going to trench the hole for us, and we'll install them. Is that right included so. in that six sixty one? No, that's not. It's another hundred dollars on on top of that. But this this six sixty one is materials only. Material only. Hundred dollars put it in. Yeah. We got some time to decide on this court. Yeah, I do believe so. Um, Kurt's on vacation until I think Monday or Tuesday, and when I get a hold of him, I can uh, hopefully see exactly what he wants three quarter or one inch. If we could, if we could talk to some other cities or something. Or, yeah. 
Maybe, like I said, maybe we need to redefine that in the, mm -hmm. so that it's a set deal one way or the other, however we do it. If anybody wants to come out and look at what I'm talking about, just let me know and I'll meet you down there. We can walk in and go through it. I trust, My is, right. I trust you. Is I know what you're talking about. I thought they owned that, that yeah. part for the South Carolina. You can do as good with a big cheap tablet and a gill of crayon. <laughs> there is a, Corey, there is a water meter uh, east of there going south on that black lot of Reggie Fisher that has got about a foot of dirt on it. I don't know you found that in or not. I can pretty much show you where it's at. Does it have a meter in it? Yeah, I don't know what kind of meter it is. Okay, there. I don't know what it does or not. I can't tell you. But I can put it in the pinpoint. And it's covered up. Well, that's all I have then. Any other questions required? Thank you. John? Hey, just so I didn't miss anything, can we backtrack a little bit and talk about this? And Adam just said, uh, this uh, impound lot and, and, and junk cars. Uh, I think what Adam's talking about is if, if somebody is arrested and they leave their car parked, the tow company would tow the car, and in order to get the car back, they pay the tow company the cost of doing that. I think what you guys are concerned about is what do we do if somebody has a bunch of junk vehicles in their on their property? Okay, a lot of times the owner of those vehicles is going to be unknown, and so there are going to be upfront costs to that. But there's a means to dispose of those vehicles so the city can recoup the expense. So there is going to be upfront. It's going to be one of those things where it's going to have to be um, uh, auctioned off and the city can recoup those expenses through that auctioning process. But if the city's going to do that, my suggestion is that a list be prepared and it's done all at once or it's just not going to be cost effective. I think so. what we're going to run into on that whole deal is I think they're going to, Ben's how it's not, I have a feeling we're going to pay the, the tow company. You're, you're going to have to. My guess is they're not going to sit around and, and let you go through the process of, of notifying the, the state, notifying potential owners, right. and then auctioning it off because you're talking about maybe three or four months before you get to the auction. It has to be published in the newspaper, and you're right. They're not going to sit there and wait to get paid. No. So there are, there are going to be a front call. And I'm not up for paying for $15 a day storage fee on oh, see, $40 Because I'm, sure I'm sure they charge a <laughs> daily oh, yeah. storage oh, fee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the reason I said that's it. Right. Yeah. There. <laughs> that's why I thought when I brought that up, if we could get that impound lot, buy it or rent it or whatever, it would save us from paying storage fees on vehicles. Yeah, you may have an upfront cost of having someone come in and tow it from this property to our mm -hmm. impound, but that's going to be minimal compared to a four-month storage fee. Saying this without thinking about it, there could be something that you own for a short period of time, clean up the cars in the city and sell a lot. Or put it in the land bank. I would donate a piece of property after I tear down the building and the city could put a impound lot on it. I'd really rather not have to look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but we, the, have, we have plenty of property if that's what we wanted to do. The thing about it is, time you meet and jump through all the hoops, you're going to have a ton of money in that piece of property. Mm -hmm. It's got to be fenced and secured and all that nonsense. That's, that's the first thing. Well, the second deal, though, is if we're not going to try and do something, we might as well get that off the go, off the boat. Yeah. It's, 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 but it's, I don't think you want to do that. I don't think you want to do that. I don't think you want to do that, but, I mean, we're in a bad pitch for the future. I know we don't. need to try to figure out a way to enforce it or do something about yeah, you're it. Gonna yeah. have to, you're going to have to spend some money, and I don't know whether, um, you know, we, we've gone through this process of, of notifying landowners and taking the landowners to court, about um, trash, and, and it sounds like there are people cleaning up those properties, I guess, without doors being here. I don't know, um, you know how successful that's going, but, but 
you, you kind of get the ball rolling and maybe people start paying attention. But like I said, it, it's it's, it's going to cost you whether you do 15 or 1,000, so you might as well do them all at once. Can somebody research it and see it, what what kind of hoops we'd have to jump through to have our own impact? It depends on where you put it. I think you just start talking to the insurance well, company. There's a, there's a piece of property that I've got down there owned by the railroad tracks, Marshall. Is it industrial? Yeah. It's going to have but, to be on industrial property yeah, according to the zoning regulations. We also have, well, we also have the industrial by the, uh, by the water treatment plant. We also too. have one. We have property south of the power plant. I have to talk with the insurance company. The insurance company is fine with things not being fenced, and that, that solves one problem. But you know they're going to want something fenced. If somebody well, goes I in think there. You, I think you will have to fence and fenced and lock. You're talking about attractive nuisance. You're, you're, you're talking about all kinds of problems. People taking up possessions then. Yeah, Steve. I think it'd have to be fenced. Yeah. Have, have to be fenced and lighted. And have to be fenced and lighted. In that deal down there, we've already got a fence, so the, the, the two fences from the homeowner, so we wouldn't have to worry about that as far as being on one site and being on some other part of the town. Which one's that, Joe? Down by the water treatment plant. Of course, it wouldn't be bad on the south side of the power plant either. No, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it'd be kind of out of the way. It wouldn't be an unsightly thing for the city. Yeah. But there are already some security cameras down there at the power plant. I don't. I think not that's that not subject of. to open meetings. Security at the power plant. Well, I mean, <laughs> if you're, you know, down there, to, you put it down in there and just run a camera on the property you built down there. Okay, the, the second thing is, and, and I'm going to bring this to the council next time, I'm not, I'm not sure why you're paying the newspaper to publish ordinances in the paper. You don't have to anymore. last two years, I don't know what that's going to do to the paper, but you guys can adopt an ordinance that allows for you to publish a summary of that ordinance as long as that ordinance is published on your website. That was discovered when we were working on these new ordinances, I was not aware that you guys were not doing that yet. Again, it was a change in state law about two years ago. I don't know whether you're billed by line. I don't know whether you pay a flat fee, but a publication can be expensive. So if a summary can be done, you're going to save some publication costs. It does require the adoption of an ordinance, but if you guys like, I can bring a uh, that ordinance or I can show LaDonna how to draft that ordinance for the next meeting. Yeah. I mean, I looked and you guys pay anywhere from $20 to $217 to publish one of those ordinances. Is that a month? Or? It's, it's per ordinance. Per ordinance? Mm -hmm. It could be anywhere from $20 to $217. You know, all you have to do is, is it's like a summary. It's like three or four lines and then saying that we're going to put it on the pay the website and then we put the full ordinance on the website. And I have to say and that he has to I read you the summary yeah. and signed off on And he has to certify it. Yeah. Can you tell me how many ordinances we have printed here in the last six months? Last, well, last year I think you guys did at least five or six when I went back and looked. Um, since I've been, well, I've the two since I've been here. And I think John did two or three more before that. There, there's been a, there's been quite a few. It's up to you. I mean, yeah. I would imagine. You know, some people can't do it. Some people can't do it. They don't operate the website. Uh, and, and, and if you don't want to do it because you've lost revenue in favor, that's up to you too. The last thing I have is I don't know if the city has a contract with the county 
for with a county. I'm assuming this would be Fred Barton. But the housing of people in jail. Right now, if somebody violates the court order, the only thing I can do is bring them into court and say, Judge, they violated this order, please find them more money. If they don't have money, it's just this circular thing over and over again. I can't say, Judge, make them serve a three day sentence until they decide they're going to pay the fine or until they get their dog out of here or whatever the case may be. I'm not talking about somebody being charged with something and, 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 and a conviction resulted in jail time. I'm talking about the option for the judge to say, you're showing disrespect to this court, you're showing disrespect to the judicial process, and therefore I want to punish you for disrespect. I'm not saying it has to be used on a regular basis. I, I don't think that's even an option at this point. I'll tell you it costs about $45 a day if somebody has to go to jail. But if it was an option, uh, and it, it may work to get some people to act a little more cooperative towards the court and the judge. Can I speak to that? Yeah, sure. The, uh, I believe the county is charged somewhere between, it's somewhere between $70 and $75 a day uh, for prisoner. Now, we had um, a recent case where we had arrested somebody, uh, and typically the, the sheriff's department, because all of our uh, major misdemeanor felony cases and stuff like that are charged through district court, that basically makes that person instantly um, under the sheriff's care. So anybody we arrest actually is typically transported to the jail by the sheriff. Now, sometimes it doesn't happen that way, and we transport them. About a month and a half ago, we transported somebody we arrested up there, and they actually sent the bill to us when it should have been sent to the sheriff's office, and it was thirty-seven fifty. So I know Barton County basically cuts for municipalities cuts whatever they charge the sheriff's department, um, and there was no um, contract or anything like that. So, um, I just know Pratt regard. Pratt does, and, and some you know, I mean, they just. The Barton County, for whatever reason, does it. Now, I think if it became a habit, it would probably ask for something like that. Maybe the dollar would be like that this year. The list is getting fairly long. I got it big. And I'm not saying I've got somebody that wants that needs to serve jail time. I'm just saying sometimes it gets to cooperate if I turn to the judge and say, Your Honor, we've been through this three times, and so I'm going to I can help with that too if you want. To take some of the load off, I'd be happy to do that. And then with then with John and the, the ordinance, do you, do you want him to write that up, or do you want to research it more and see how much we're actually paying on it, or you just said you want a discussion in the council to look at you? So. Research,
Email it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can do that. So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed?